Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 1st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. Of course, the big news on Friday was Facebook announcing that 50 million user profiles were leaked due to a vulnerability in Facebook's view as feature. Using this feature, you were able to see your profile, how another user would experience your profile. But apparently this feature gave attackers access to arbitrary users Facebook profile. Now, according to to Facebook, the latest number of affected profiles is around 50 million. Given that Facebook has some around 2 billion different profiles, it roughly affects 2.5% of Facebook users. I don't believe Facebook has notified affected users yet. However, if you are affected, then Facebook should have logged out your account. So if you're going to Facebook and all of a sudden need to log in again, well, then probably your account was one of those 50 million. It's also not known if these accounts were targeted in some manner or if these were just random accounts. There was also an announcement late last week that someone was going to do a live stream of deleting Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook account. Later, after the press release came out about the leak, this video stream announcement was rescinded. So possible that it was related somehow to this vulnerability. Initially, Facebook Facebook just disabled the view as feature. Not sure if it actually has been enabled again, but Facebook said that they had fixed the flaw. Features like this are of course always a little bit tricky to implement, so it's very possible that Facebook temporarily mapped the target user's permissions to your account in order to display your profile as this particular user would see it. And by mapping these permissions, maybe you had access also to that particular user's profile. But this is really just speculation so far. I haven't seen any official announcements from Facebook or from anybody who may have spotted this vulnerability in the past. Overall, this should be a good reminder that anything you post on Facebook, even things like direct messages, you shouldn't necessarily consider private. Now, an application that specifically advertises that it does preserve user privacy is Telegram, but apparently the latest Windows and Linux desktop versions had by default a feature enabled that would set up a call directly between two users. The problem with this is that in this particular case, the user's IP address is leaked. And now this, of course, can lead to a better calling experience but if users try to stay anonymous they should relay their calls via one of telegram's servers this setting was apparently reverted in the latest desktop version and all you have to do is you need to go in settings and again disable this direct call feature other versions of telegram in particular the android version appear to have this setting set up correctly by default the problem was reported to telegram as part of a bug bounty and has been fixed in the latest version and browser notifications are a relatively new feature that allow websites to send notifications to a user even if the user isn't visiting the particular website at the time. They're often used, for example, by news websites to inform the user of new news stories and the like, and users have to specifically sign up for these notifications. But apparently some websites have become quite tricky in how to get users to sign up for these notifications by adding an additional dialogue to these notifications claiming that if the user doesn't sign up for these notifications then certain features of the website like for example a video that the user is trying to play will not work and if the user agrees then of course these pop-ups will be used to deliver spam 
So really more uh, user awareness and social engineering issue, probably something to let your users know about. You can also review the sites that have permissions to send you pop-up messages. And looks like DDE exploits are not going away. Xavier has a write-up about an Excel spreadsheet that he came recently across and how to analyze it. While it's something you really shouldn't be vulnerable to at this point, it's still kind of odd that the sample that Xavier found didn't really trigger any antivirus alerts in VirusTotal. And congratulations to Kyle for winning the September Raspberry Pi Challenge. If you do want to participate, all it takes is a comment. Please use the comment form on the ISC website. Good or bad comments, they all qualify. Of course, if you like this podcast, then let your friends know about it and add good comments to your favorite podcast platform. If I miss any podcast platform where it is not available yet, uh, please let me know and I'll see what I can do to add this podcast. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.